Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Morning, morning, morning. Welcome to opening day Sunday. Oh, yeah. Can't believe you're not out there, man. I'm so appreciative of you uh, taking some time out of your day and hanging out with me. Oh, I'm going this afternoon. <laughs> me too, maybe. I need to spend some time with God together in the rain and the wind. That's right. You never feel closer to God than when your tree's doing this and you're praying. And you're 25 feet in the air. And you're, that big. And that you're this closer. big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I stand, I'm even closer. So That's right. So we got a couple of announcements this morning. Um, if this is your first time attending uh, Inspired Church, welcome. We do have in your bulletin, we have this Connect card. So go ahead and fill that out and then uh, just lay it in the box in the back. Also, if it's your first time and you want a prayer request, if you flip it over, look at that. It's a one-time deal, or not one-time deal, it's a multi-use card. So Right, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I just throw that in there. Um, so just go ahead and fill out. If you have some prayer requests, go ahead and fill out your prayer requests and then uh, turn that into the back also. Also, if you're new, we'd love to get you a mug. If you uh, go in the back, Welcome Center will grab you a, an Inspire mug. One for everybody in the family if you want. That'd be really cool if you guys could be sporting some coffee or... Uh, hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Eggnog. Right, yeah. That'd be good. Also, if on Facebook, if you did the like and share... Um, Facebook post that's on there. There's some gifts in the back by the Greeter Center. Um, there's a, a mug, there's a pen, and there's one of these really cool wristbands. And there might be other stuff inside the mug too, maybe some candies. I, I didn't know. Ooh, candy. Well, I think I did let some like and share on that. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. Good for you. Let's see if I'm missing anything here. I think you got everybody. I think I got everything. Yeah, you did great. So if you guys want to stand up, we're going to start this with some praise and worship. Maybe do your. Uh, an air high five to your neighbor or something. But join us in worship. Good morning, Inspired Church. How many of you are very glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. In Psalm 126, verse 2, it says, Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. So would you join us in worship this morning as we praise our wonderful God.
every chain, oh God, you have done great things. So we wait for your freedom, awaken the light, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things, oh, oh God, you serve a God who does great things. So would you continue to join us in worship as we sing about that great God once again. Judah, you 
He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee. Philippians 2, it says, though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in that human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a grave Jesus 
Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Sing praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King of kings. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you that you're the lion and the lamb. Thank you that, um, that you came for us, for each and every one of us. Lord, we love you. Lord, I want to I pray this morning for the, for the folks that are, that are sick. They're, uh, they're either at home or maybe they're in the hospital. Heavenly Father, I, I pray that you would, you would touch them in a, a special way physically and emotionally. Um, this has got to be hard just to be to be stuck inside, to be stuck in one spot. Heavenly Father, will you just be with them as they, as they recover, as they, as they fight, and give them strength to continue. And for those that have lost loved ones, Lord, uh, will you just be with them in a special way too, that there's, we know that there's hope, and, uh, and we, we tend to, uh, we can get really down when somebody, when they go home to be with you, but Heavenly Father, they're home with you, they're healed. Thank you for that. Thank you for the way that you uh, you bring us home. Now, Lord, be with us in this service. I pray that you, the Holy Spirit, just settle here um, and, and just touch us and let us hear your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys can sit down. So I want to uh, remind you of your tithes and offerings. You know, it, it means a lot. To be, to be giving to the Lord, and we, we thank you that you continue to do that faithfully, and we, we just want to encourage you to continue that. Um, the, the church, just we love the fact that, that you're giving, um, and it was down a little bit, but we would just love the fact that you just continue that faithful support through, uh, through this, this weird time that we're in. And so there are several different ways that we can give, um, and you guys have been seeing this um, for the last few months. But just thanks for your continued support, and uh, we just want to continue to, to do that. There are a place, there's places in the back on each corner where you can put your, your greeting card, your, your connect card, your prayers, and your offerings. Uh, and, so, and so thanks for being faithful through all that. And so this being opening weekend, I thought we'd start with some, uh, some bullet points. <laughs> or... Uh, Maybe uh, we could invite you to uh, put a couple bucks in the offering. Don't, do you want to hear more? No. That was kind of a stretch. So you have no idea how many of those we have. All right, I'm done. I'm not going to do any more of that. We're done. All kidding aside, it means a lot that you're here on this opening weekend. Thanks so much for coming. Online, welcome. Uh, maybe you're in the stand watching. I'll be kind of quiet. No, no. Uh, Keep your earbuds in, but um, thank you guys for joining us today. So uh, this series we've been going through has been B inspired. So maybe suddenly these huge letters behind us make a little more sense um, if you're new to us this week. But um, So you see, each and every one of us can be something. As a matter of fact, we be many things to different people. To my wife, I, I be husband, or I, I be uh, schnookums, or honey bear, or, uh, well, my kids are probably dry heaving right now anyway, so I'll just stop. Um, the church, I be the men's group leader, and I be a board member. I be uh, that tall guy. Um, to the barista at the coffee shop, I be the, uh, hey, give me whatever the latte of the day is. Or at work, I, I be greater operator. Um, but some of those things that we are, those are what we be to different people, but 
What do you be to your heavenly father? The truth is we are described in many different ways in God's message to us, but in our theme passage in this series, those are some of the things, these are some of the things that we be to him. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him, for God was in Christ reconciling people, or reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20. So to the God who made us and gave us life, we be ambassadors and reconcilers. We be the vessels that he desires to change the world. But just for a moment, let's imagine, what, if you could choose to be anything, what would you choose? Keep this weekend in mind. I was thinking, uh, this might be kind of fitting. Would you choose to be the world's greatest hunter? I gotta give me that cup. Or uh, maybe you would choose to, or you'd love to hold the world's largest frame. Check this thing out. I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know if you could mount that to a wall. That'd take like a special set of two by six to hold that guy up. But um, so those are some different things um, that we could be. Not bad, right? The truth is, all of us get a chance to be something. We can be amazing hunters. We can be kind and gracious. We can be rude and grumpy. We can be generous and influential. The question is, what do you choose to be? Really, think about that. Um, Um, I pray this, this question resonates in your mind throughout our time together today. And every time you look at that enormous word, the B. Today I want to show you a message from God's word that shows us an incredible something that we can be. However you're reading God's word today, I invite you to turn to Isaiah chapter 58. And here's some important context to that. Um, taken as a whole book, Isaiah has tried to explain, he's a prophet, um, the reason why God's people have been sent to Babylon as a punishment and our time out for, from God for those last 50 years that they've, they've been there. In other words, the country has been trending in the wrong direction. The people have made foolish and sinful choices, and now God says, I'm going to let you experience the pain from the choices that you've made, much like a kid that disobeys when they put their hand up on the stove. God's, God allows judgment to fall on his people due to their own choices. Isaiah says, you'll have to deal with the pain of your choices, but I'm not going to leave you there, thank the Lord. This is ultimately about their restoration. So I invite you to stand with me. We're going to start in Isaiah 58, verse 1. Shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn about me. They act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We have feasted, we have fasted before you, they said. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves and you don't even notice it. I will tell you why, I respond. It's because you're fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep, keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your hands, your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourself with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind the people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and don't hide from your relatives who need your help. Then, then your salvation will come like the dawn and your, your wounds will be quickly healed. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call on the Lord, he will answer, yes, I am here. He will click, quickly reply, remove the, your heavy yoke. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. 
Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. And the Lord will guide you continually, giving you the water, giving you water when you are dry, and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the way that Isaiah um, wrote down the way that Israel had acted at this time. Lord, help us to be mindful of it. Help us to take it and, uh, and chew on it for a little bit. Thank you for your word. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys can sit down. So just a moment, as a moment ago, I talked about we've been known as a lot of things over the, the, all these years. Um, so one, so one of the good things I've been known as is, you know, the world's greatest dad, obviously. But um, a bad thing, one of the bad things I was remembered by, I was uh, thinking about back in, in uh, high school, I, I was on the varsity team for a couple years, and so I really had a hard time starting the games. And so it looked kind of weird, you know, there's a big guy sitting on the bench, but um, out of that, uh, Bubble Guts was my nickname for a little bit there. So I'd, get, I'd just get nervous, and uh, so but that was short-lived. One thing I've not yet been identified as is um, that incredible identification from our passage today. The rebuilder of homes, a restorer of homes and a rebuilder of walls, as it says in chap or chapter 58, verse 12. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. Now we can get some clarity to, the, to those titles when we really know what they mean. This is not, you're going to be like the next fixer-upper, Chip Gaines. We're not talking actual physical walls here. They're much more than physical construction. When we told, no, I'm sorry. When you're told you can be a, the rebuilder of walls and the restorer of homes, it's actually a re reference to bringing back, like hope to the hurting, reconciliation to the abandoned and the orphaned, revitalization to families, homes, communities, restoration of life and joy to those who are broken, and a new opportunity to believe and dream again. And you and I could be used by God to do that, to be known for that, to breathe life into lifeless spaces, to give hope to the hopeless, and to restore homes and families. Well, I don't know about you, but even greater than being the world's best hunter, basketball player, great op greater operator, it would be to be known as a rebuilder of broken walls and a restorer of homes. But how is that possible? It'd be easy to think, well, by coming to church and doing good. It reminds me of a time growing up in church uh, when that question, your Sunday school teacher would ask you a question and you don't really know the answer. So you just say, read the Bible and pray. And they're like, well, yeah, that's the right answer, of course. You know, We even call it RB&P. Please hear me when I say this. Read the, reading the Bible and giving financially to the work of the Lord, oh, those are all good, and that's stuff that we need to do consistently. Tell your neighbor they're good. Right on. But in our passage today, God actually says something shocking to people who are doing all the churchy things. These people are doing the right stuff, but strangely, they're not known as the rebuilders of walls and the restorers of homes. Why? Well, let's find out. You got to, you've got to see the context of the passage and what's going on behind the scenes. The people of God at this time are kind of frustrated with the Lord, and here's the problem that they have. They come to the temple every day, we fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We've been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice. Every day. And you thought you come to church a lot. Um, this is a group who's doing all the right things personally in worship, but when they go to the temple, fasting and praying, uh, but they're wondering, so why aren't you answering our prayers? We've been doing all the right things. We've obeyed all the rules. So God answers them in verses 5 through 7. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. And do not hide from relatives who need your help. God says you're going through the, the motions. Your motives aren't right. 
your heart isn't moved. That's not what I want. God says, let me tell you what I really want, what I really seek. He wants to share your food with the hungry. Give shelter, give clothes, and don't hide from your relatives who need your help. Don't ignore their call when their name pops up on the caller ID. Scholars point out that this literally means to serve or to wait on people in need. This is more than just giving money. It means getting involved. God is saying, take your stuff, your time, your emotions, your energy, and get involved by serving those in need. God says, and Jesus draws from this main point from Isaiah 58 in Matthew 25, if you don't actively love those in need, then you don't understand what it looks like to love me. In other words, if you have a deep connection, if you have a deep connection with me, then that should be reflected on how you respond to the need of others around you. You can check the boxes and do the right things, but if you don't put this into action, you've completely missed the point. God says that we need to serve our communities, to serve our schools, our businesses, our neighborhoods. We're not called to leave a school or business to go to a better one. We're called we're called to be where we are. We're called to serve the neighborhood, make it better, make it more like Jesus. Our community should be better, more like Jesus, because we live there and here. God says to us, if you do that, then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I'm here. He will quickly re reply. Then your light will shine out from the darkness. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you're dry, restoring your strength. You will look like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. That's how you get the title of re rebuilder of walls and restorer of homes. So let's make it personal. What would it look like if we actually did that? In other words, what if you saw your neighborhood, your workplace, your gym, your coffee shop as your mission field? How would a missionary live on your street, in your town? in here, in this area? How would they meet the needs to those around you, those poor and marginalized and hurting? God challenges us to overflow our story, to let the love of Jesus overflow by meeting the needs of others around us. I remember when God really hammered this point home to me. I, we were living on the other side of town here, at, um, our first house, and we had a neighbor that um, she just didn't come out much. And we had been doing a lot of work at our house. We'd been restoring the inside, and we had uh, completely redone the yard. Um, and we just never saw her. She never really, she was kind of reclusive. And when we did, it was very brief. But one day we saw her out mowing her grass, and she was really struggling with emptying out the clippings bag. And so that little, that quiet voice, you know, was prodding me, go over there and talk to her. So I did, and uh, man, that was the beginning of an awesome relationship. Uh, she's a little older than my mom and dad, but um, she, she was very receptive to, to, to me coming over and talking, but she wasn't super receptive to the help at that point, you know? But I kind of broke her of that. I, I just kept going over there, and uh, we kept helping. I actually ended up parking a trailer over there so she could dump her yard clippings in that, and then I'd, I'd clean it out for her once in a while, and then I, it turned into me mowing her grass. It, it grew into a, a, a great relationship, even today. But the heavens didn't open up and the hallelujah chorus didn't begin to play. No bright light showed down on me. No halo appeared above my head. But I started to realize at that moment what our passage reminds us of today. There is so much need that we can make a difference with right outside our front door. He has planted you where you are. So what if you asked just one question? It's a question overflowers ask. I pray you'll ask it over and over and over again during this season. How can I help? The question is not, can I fix everything? The question is, how can I help? I know you can't end global poverty, but can you feed one family? I know you can't fix a friend's marriage, but can you have them over for dinner? I know you can't be on location to help our soldiers, but can you write them a letter? I know you can't do it every time, but can you shovel somebody's neighbor, can you shovel your neighbor's driveway? Maybe you can't supply all the school supplies, but maybe you could buy pencils for a kid or a class. While everyone else is sitting around shaking their heads saying, well, I can't do everything, just do something. 
while everyone else is coming up with excuses like, if I do it for them, I have to do it for everybody. You just go ahead and do it for them. Well, everyone says, what difference will it really make? You just do it and decide that you're going to make a difference in that moment with that person and let God sort out the details. What if everyone else standing around you um, was wondering, uh, can I get a tax deduction for this? What if you just go out and grab a gift card and give it to them? What if maybe all you can do is pray? That's a lot. So pray. Pray at that moment. Pray there with them. It's you, them, and God. At that very moment, that physical time, take the time to pray with them. You do what God says you can do and trust him to only do what he can do. I don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying be manipulated. I'm not asking you to let, the other, let others take advantage of your kindness or your generosity. That's not the kind of life and attitude God's word is talking about here. But when you see a need that you can meet, you can't meet every need, but for those of you that, for the needs that you can meet, meet it. That's what it means to overflow your story. Today we want to help you take the next step in living this out by providing you with some individual ideas. So there are some ideas listed in your bulletin on the back side. Um, and here's some I wanted to highlight. Hunt, hunters, you could go out and slay a deer and, uh, and donate it to a family that needs some meat. Even take it to Cushman's. They'll actually donate all the meat to Love, Inc. Who can they can um, pass that out to families that need some food. Handy people, if you're handy, maybe uh, purchase some supplies and winterize or repair somebody's home. You could snow blow or shovel like we've already talked about, or you could prepare Christmas cards for, um, for people, some elderly or soldiers. You could clean a house for somebody that's sick or elderly. You could volunteer to babysit for a young couple so they could finally get a break and go out and just be gone for a little bit. If you're in a small group, you're going to be challenged to take on one project between now and December 24th. Maybe that means supplying a family with a Thanksgiving dinner or a Christmas dinner. Or maybe you can adopt a family for Christmas. This last one is near and dear to my heart. You can help with the White Cloud Christmas meal. This ministry has that's been on the heart of one of our good friends, Dallas Dowling, for the past few years. Dallas is someone that I can truthfully call a rebuilder of homes and restore a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. His love for Jesus overflows to the people of White Cloud. I just wanted to share part of his story with us today that can inspire us. Hello, Inspire family. So good to have you joining me here today with my good friend, Dallas Dowling. Dallas, thanks for taking a second and chatting with us today. Hey, we've been going through this series called Be Inspired, understanding that God has called us to embody the gospel in the world in which we live, for us to be ambassadors, be the church, be those people that point others to Jesus Christ. And Dallas, one of the things I've loved about you is you've always had this passion and call in your life. And you live in the White Cloud area, right? How long have you been in White Cloud and what was it that drew you there? Well, my wife and I started praying about where we'd go to live uh, after I graduated. We graduated from college, and uh, we felt called to the area, and so um, we moved to White Cloud, and uh, and uh, actually we moved to Nuevo, and then uh, uh, I went to the schools to see if I could get a subbing job, and um, I walked into White Cloud schools, and the uh, assistant superintendent said, well, would you rather have a job than a subbing job? I said, this is where I'm supposed to be, so I felt like I was called to there. And how long have you been in White Cloud now? The school system, too. Uh, 25 years. 25 years. I'm on my 26th year. That's great. Yeah. Now, I know right from the very beginning, God started laying on your heart, you and Terry, about wanting to make a difference in that community. And I know there are some practical ways that you've been doing that. So tell me a, a little bit about what are some of those practical ways that God's asked you to make that difference in the community? Yes, and the first small step I took was I started a prayer group for teachers, mm -hmm. and we started praying together. And out of that, um, Christmas dinner uh, was evolved from that. Um, and uh, the deer poll that we put on uh, as a uh, group of, we're trying to reach the community evolved too. So. And, and tell us a little bit about this Christmas dinner, guys. I love hearing about this. How many meals do you deliver on Christmas morning on an average year? On uh, the last couple of years, it's been around 400. So, That's incredible. Yeah. 400 families that you've been able to impact, that God's been meals. able to impact. 400 meals. So it's, it's a, it's a, that many people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and that's 400 meals, and that meal may feed a family of three, four, five, six, yeah, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. 
and you've seen quite a few things as you've been delivering, seeing some needs that maybe some of us wouldn't be aware of. Yeah, it was unbelievable. The first few years we started doing this, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. I, I walked into houses where there wasn't running water, there wasn't any heat. Um, it all started because we found there was a person, our family, living in a tent uh, weeks before Christmas. And um, so that's when we started uh, Christmas Center. We can do one thing. We can do one little thing and, and provide a hot meal on Christmas Day. And uh, other people just started uh, providing the food and uh, it's grown just tremendously. And how many years have you been able to do this? Um, I think it's 12 or somewhere between 12 and 15 years, somewhere in there, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So God's been doing this for the last few years, working mm -hmm. through you and then others like you who have a heart for the community. Mm -hmm. So what has God shown you through all this? I, he's broken my heart for the community because mm -hmm. of the things I've seen. Um, you know, you, th you see kids come into school and you don't think they live in those situations, but uh, um, when you see it firsthand, it's hard to deny. And so um, that's one of the things he's shown me. So as you've been out there being inspired, mm -hmm. being ambassadors, being a reconciler, being the we, if we could say it, um, how has that impacted your faith and your relationship with God? Um, it's always, you know, challenged me to, to go deep with God and just to, to always be on the lookout for the things that he is doing in our in our community, just little things, you know, and see see those things that he wants me to do. Um, I know I miss him because I think we all miss him at times. You know, God's trying to send us in a direction we might be dragging our feet or doing something else, but but uh, when it does happen, it's just amazing. Yeah. It feels so good. And because of your faithfulness and perseverance of how God worked through you now today, 400 meals on a Christmas morning, 400 families being fed on a Christmas morning, and how incredible that is. Yeah. And I know you know that. I know you know this, my friends. That's more than a meal. That's hope. Mm -hmm. That's a love of Jesus Christ in a tangible form. Suddenly, something that seems maybe foreign, something in the mind, it's now right in front of them. An actual, tangible act of faith. Something that they can see and experience for themselves. Dallas, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this and for sharing a little bit of your story of how God's working through you. I love just an ordinary passing out of meals becomes something extraordinary when Jesus gets them a hold of it. So thanks for being inspired. Thanks for being a part of what God's doing here. Thank you. Yep. I mean, isn't that good? So how will you overflow this season of Inspire? Hoping for, we're hoping for 250 acts of service between now and Christmas Eve. Do you think there are maybe just 250 things in our community? Did you guys realize the need in our community around us? Well, this isn't a third world country, this is Michigan. There's need all around. I do, I believe that we can, that there are rebuilders of walls, restorers of homes right here in this place who God desires to use to meet those needs. This is one of those defining moments in these seasons in our world. Things are crazy out there right now, but I believe there is hope. Hope because of people just like you. You are the who God desires to bring and bring hope to the healing in this broken world. This is the time where we determine, I will, will I step up and be what God has called me to be? Will I be inspired and be fully available to God to change this world? Will you please stand with me as we close? I'm going to ask you to take that list in your bulletin of all the ways that you can overflow your story and put it in your hand. I'm going to ask that if to, before you leave today, if you could circle one of those, those um, you could agree to pray and maybe even see where the Lord may lead you to, to do more. Like Dallas said, there are people right here without running water, without power, and God wants to use you to reach them. These are more than the nice things to do. These are opportunities to overflow your story. For Jesus to overflow your life into others. These are the ways we can rebuild walls and restore homes to shine the light and give hope. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, will you please just lead us and guide us, use us to be inspired, to be your ambassadors, to be your reconcilers, to go into this community and be your hands and feet. Lord, we, didn't, we know that there is a great need. It's, it's been shown even more today with, with uh, Dallas and his, and his efforts. Lord, will you please just bless him in a special way. Thank you for the work that's being done in White Cloud. 
Or there's work here in Fremont. There's work in Newego and Hesperia Bridgeton um, and Holton. Uh, and just please open our eyes to see it so we're not stuck in our little huddles, Lord. Open our eyes to see the need so we can go out and be. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, I, I pray that everyone goes and, uh, and this, this just sits in the back of their mind today and, and it eats away at them as they go through their afternoon and it motivates them to move beyond where we're at. Lord, thank you for the way that you love us, and I pray that uh, as we go throughout this week, we can, we can be the church, we can be the, the reconcilers, we can rebuild homes and, um, and, and be you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You're dismissed.